Anyways, Ali H, thank you so much for the 100. Really appreciate that, dude. Uh, do both of you think Azeroth is a first one? Oof. No. No. He does. I don't. I don't... No, no. I don't think Azeroth is a first one. I think Azeroth is one of the first ones. But when I say one of the first ones, I mean one of the first titans. So I don't think she's the first one in terms of part of the original group. I think there's a speculation theory to be made for Azeroth being a first one, right? I think I could steel man that argument, um, but I don't think so. And so I'll give you a chance to go into why you don't think so either. But I'll say this. It will cheapen the lore of the first one significantly. It fights against everything that we... Well, let's say it fights against the little that we know about the first ones entirely. Most importantly, and I would say this is perhaps the biggest thing, why would a first one need to encase themselves into a planet the same as the Titans do? That makes no sense. We know why the Titans are inside planets, right? It's right after the universe was created. Their energy formed near sources of warmth, so stars, and the power that they had, the gravity field that they built, sort of attracted matter to it and planets were formed around them. Why would that be something that a first one go through, goes through? That, that would make no sense. And more importantly, no. if a first one, say, decided to put themselves inside a planet, why not just wake up when Azeroth goes stabby stab? I don't know about you, but I don't care how well I'm sleeping. If you stab me in the ass with a giant fucking sword, I'm waking up. <laughs> Right? right, I'm getting up and I'm going. The fuck is that? Right? She just goes like, nah, that was fun, kinky. Is that what she went? She just turns <laughs> over, hits the snooze button, mate. Like, or she just went, oof, do it again, daddy. Like, probably oh, I don't, I don't never know say that to me again, please. <laughs> I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's just weird. Like, the story wouldn't make sense with her being a first one. If Blizzard went that way, it would be, oh my fuck. All right, your turn. Why Why do you not think that she is a um, a first one? Uh, simply because the prophecies. They're very um, kind of scattered, especially in Warcraft lore. But when prophecies actually take place, generally there, there's some element of truth to it. And she is a titan. Like She is described as a titan in all prophecies that relate to Azeroth. So to have her then become a first one, just kind of cheapens the entirety of all of those like cultures and yeah. storylines that we've been given so far but that doesn't necessarily mean that she is just a titan uh, mm -hmm. she is at the mercy of the rest of the pantheon who are known to experiment on things yeah so they, they they're obviously trying to turn her into something more yes but she is just a titan i will say though there's something very interesting about azeroth's story and i realized that this is sort of like old lore that we're jumping into here but so, uh, Azeroth's story is very similar to Zuval in Broken Pieces. Zuval is considered to be a Titan++, plus plus, right? So he's considered to be yeah. far more powerful than any of the Eternal Ones and any of the Titans. But that's also true for Azeroth. Azeroth is also considered yeah. to be the most powerful Titan that the Titans have ever encountered. And this is before they started fucking with her, right? They they Before they started fucking with her, at least according to the Chronicles... They already believe that she is far more powerful than the rest of them. It's the most powerful Titan they've ever encountered. Um, why? Why is Zuval and Azeroth exactly. so much more powerful? Like, now we've been given the explanation of why Azeroth is at least more powerful than others, because she consumed all the spirit, which is something of an anomaly when it comes to the Titans. They usually yeah. actually give spirit to keep their, like... Creations. Calm. Yeah. But... Azeroth was eating it all, like she was just consuming and consuming and consuming, so yeah. she's gonna be extremely strong with all that spirit, right? But that doesn't explain why Zoval is so strong comparatively to the rest of the Eternal Ones, considering yeah. he was the Arbiter to begin with, not consuming those souls, he was sending them elsewhere. But for some reason, he also had a shit ton of anima because they used these anima to create the second Arbiter, and they clearly yeah. didn't use so much that it killed him, because at least according to the the lore in Ravendraith, if you drain someone entirely of anima, you kill them. Yeah. You can't drain something entirely of anima. It will kill them. So he had more than enough to to power the Arbiter and then then some for himself still. 
right? So he clearly had a ton of fucking anima. In fact, he probably had so much anima that not only did they drain him to make the Arbiter, but he still had enough anima left to still be more powerful than any of the others. Well, that just begs the question of how they managed to beat him in the first place, because now you've ramped him up to, like, Titan plus, 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 and they're still just like, nah, power of friendship, mate, we got him. Um, I don't know what, what to write here. Let me just quickly say, I think the form <laughs> of Zuval that we see right now is his final form, right? I think that is his final form. That is what he looked like, at least before he got banished. Um, it does stand yeah, to reason, and this is where him. I could probably steel man your argument. Um, he seems to look like the collection of the sigils. Like, it seems like every sigil is a different piece of armor, much like Power Rangers, right? Where each fucking Power Ranger would turn <laughs> into... Their bots would turn into a bigger bot, and it would sort of be a collection of the different bigger bots. So that could Mechazord definitely be... Val. Sorry? Mechazord Val. Like. Yeah, yeah. So, something to that effect. That's entirely possible, right? Um, but no, I, I don't think so. I will say, though... In my estimation, looking at the lore and looking at what we know right now, I believe that there are three titans that isn't titans. They, they are far more powerful and far older than any other eternal ones and than any um, of the titans, and that is Elune, Azeroth, and Zuval. Where they fit into the picture, I genuinely do not know. But I see a lot of people sort of pointing out that how can you say that Elune is more powerful than the Winter Queen? Well, uh, bro, those comments on your YouTube videos trigger the shit out of me. It's like, did you just not pay attention to the same thing we just watched? Yeah. Like, it's all right there for you. You don't go <laughs> to someone for help unless they're stronger than you, bro. The the fact, yeah. I mean, you're not going to go to someone that is just as strong as you and go, help, please. Because if you can't help yourself, then clearly they're not going to be able to help you either. And also, considering how the Winter Queen spoke about Elune. It wasn't just the Winter Queen that was crying out for help. It seems as if the whole Shadowlands were crying yeah. out to Elune for help. In other words, her power levels are inferred or implied to be incredible, right? Now, again, some people are pointing out that the 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 tear that Elune made that fixed Ardenweald was made by the Winter Queen and by Elune. There are at least three different occasions that we know of where Elune made a, a tear with no help from anyone. I don't think the tear was made by the Winter Queen. I think the Winter Queen simply willed Elune to make the tear. The tear is the tear of Elune. It's her tear. She can make them herself. They seem to be incredibly powerful. The Titans really liked the one that they got. Um, her tears have some kind of power that was powerful enough, just by the way, to fix Ardenweald. This place that Zuval completely yeah. fucked, she fixed it with a single tear. But, okay, so the power levels of the tears is a really weird question, and you know as well as I do, I fucking hate talking about power levels in WoW because of yeah. the different aspects and kind of uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors version of their cosmology. Yeah. But one tear, with the help of the Winter Queen, because it stabilized, tuned to Ardenweald, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. Fixed Ardenweald and remade the sigil, remade their purpose. One tear was enough to kill Isera and convert her into a nightmare dragon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, similar kind of power levels, pretty big. Mm -hmm. uh, but that same tear was only part of one, like one part of fucking five needed yes. to keep the avatar of Sargeras locked in place. Yes. Come on now, what the fuck? There, okay, so this is Blizzard playing fast and loose with their own lore. I genuinely believe that. The, 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 I would say that that is probably what, what what one could consider gameplay mechanics over lore. So you wanted five and therefore you sort of pretended that there's five. Uh, Lore-wise, yeah. you probably only needed one. Um, but yeah, so in my estimation, there are three titans that do not fit the titan image. And that is Elune, Zuval, and Azeroth. They are far too powerful for some reason or another. They are just more powerful than their counterparts. And before people go, but sister, sister, Primus even says that the Winter Queen is and Elune are sisters. That doesn't mean by blood. Simply means they had, at one point or another, worked together. Because it seems as if the Primus calls Zuval brother, but it does not appear as if they're actually related to one another. 
Same with uh, the Titans, called Sargeras brother. We know they don't have the same mother and father. They're different Titans. They have different abilities, different powers. They're brothers in arms, sisters in arms, right? So it might just be that these beings are so much more powerful, but they've never really revealed the fact that they came before, right? That they actually saw the Eternal Ones being created. Yeah. Um, they just sort of went along with it because they didn't have to showcase that they are more powerful because they had the same goals, if you will. That That is sort of where I fall on, on this argument. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to it. No, no, you hit the nail on the head. 